the primary reason for visiting your, your PCP is pain. And a lot of people have various types of pain. Most, most people handle it, but you know, lower back pain is extremely common and it's a huge cost to, to the medical system and it's lots of personal suffering associated with it. So with functional imaging, we can get a picture of what brain areas get activated when you feel pain and what brain areas are sort of the connectivity between various uh, parts of your brain that, that talk to each other in a different way when you're constantly experiencing pain, whereas when you're just at rest and, and not experiencing any pain. So this is a, uh, the image we just acquired of a brain structure in a subject. And that's the MRI component of it. So you see you know, various brain areas. And on top of that, on top of this, we'll add brain activity, which we measure with another set of images. So we can see how much activation is going on in the interior cingulate, for example, in this subject. And uh, the new technology we're using is actually a PET and MRI combined. So here's the, the MRI image on the left. And in the middle is the PET image, which is a measure of brain inflammation uh, or microglial activity. And it used to be that you did sort of a washer dryer model. First you do the, the MRI, and then you take the subject out and you put them in the PET scanner. And uh, now we can collect these images simultaneously. So that gives us the possibility to measure brain activity that's directly related to uh, brain chemistry. So we get measures of sort of blood flow and how does that affect our measure of brain chemistry. So the hope is that these new methods will give us much clearer uh, results on, on PET data and the PET data may also inform on the types of changes we see in the MRI data. If we can actually see that your brain is changed by this pain and if we can see that this part of, of either your tennis elbow is, is inflamed or we can see that the receptors in your brain are changed by the ongoing pain, uh, it validates the story and it says, well, there's something real going on here. Whereas a lot of patients are met with skepticism that, ah, oh, it's probably nothing and you're just complaining, but we're trying to get a, a good objective marker of, of the ongoing suffering that these patients experience.